At the beginning of this year, I made a video about my journal lineup showing you which journals I'm using for 2024 and what all of their different purposes are, why I chose that journal for that purpose. I thought it would be really fun now that we're halfway through the year and I'm changing some things up to do another little check in and tell you what's changing, which journals are staying, which journals are leaving my rotation and why. Hi, I'm Erin. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'm so excited you want to talk about journals with me. Let's begin with the original five. These are the journals that I discussed in my last video and we'll have a chat about whether or not they're being used, whether or not they're being retired and why. <laughs> Let's start with one that's not going anywhere. This is my reading journal. I'm still not obsessed with the mustard, but I have been having such a good time using this journal. Quick little peek inside. I've been keeping track of all of my reading for the year. It's going pretty well. It's hard to tell once you start to chunkify a book, but I do feel like I'll probably fit the rest of the year in here. If not, I guess we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it, but I have been having such a good time using this journal. I'm thinking for my next one, maybe a square though. Let me know your thoughts on reading journal sizes and what you think works best for you because I have really enjoyed the B5 and doing a whole book review page to a single page. This journal is from Archer and Olive. It came in one of their subscription boxes in 2023. Unfortunately, that means that you can't get this journal anymore and it is quite dirty. I hate to give it a little bath maybe, but a little wipe down. You can find similar colored B5 journals, but not this one exactly, unfortunately, with the embroidery and stuff. So sorry about that. I'm gonna put it over here to this side because it's structurally sound and can support being the bottom of a stack of journals. Next one we're gonna talk about is this guy. This one's from Kuma Stationery and Crafts. It's an A5 journal. This one I've been using for my research and development journal. I think I've decided I don't like gold gilded edges with all of this prettiness because once you actually use the journal, they cease to be pretty as you can see, but like, it's fine. It's not a huge deal. So the research and development journal, this is the one that I do any layouts that are not to go in my own journal. So if I'm doing example layouts, for instance, this was from a collab with Sticky when they wanted me to show how you could use their packs. These are just swatches of things from the washi tape shop that are for haul videos. And at some point, uh, at some point, here we go. Here's an example. So this is another Sticky example spread going on here to be like, this is how you could do a cover page and a calendar page with one of the sticky cute packs. Or this was some like reading journal stuff that I ended up redoing in different journals. So you'll see that a little bit later, foreshadowing. I am running out of space in this journal, but it does have just random pages like this one in between things that still don't have anything on them. Places that I can swatch pens and work out color themes and stuff. So that's kind of, sticking around until it's too full to use anymore. And then I will move into a different research and development journal. This one's held up pretty well. I think the spine's in good condition. It's always been a little bit ripply like this. I don't know what the go was here. My other Kuma journals that I've had weren't like that, but this is the second Kuma journal that I've almost completely finished and it did lose one ribbon bookmark along the way. Likewise, the one I used last year also lost a ribbon bookmark, so that's something to keep in mind with the Kuma journals, but I do think they're pretty good. Onto the pile, because you're staying for now. Here's a little surprise. This journal's from the Quirky Cup Collective. It's the Made of Stars journal, as written down here on the bottom. It's a bit different to my other journals in that this one has a cardboard cover, which isn't my favorite, but it's how they get it to look like this pretty, like it's printed and then foiled. I have a little rip in the corner. That's my own fault for like dropping the journal. But I was saying in my last video that this is for thoughts and feelings, kind of long-term brain journaling. I'm not really sticking stuff in this one. I'm not worrying about making it pretty. It's just for thoughts and feelings, but I'm not really a thoughts and feelings journaling person, or I haven't been, I hadn't been reaching for it. I'd had it going since, let me quickly check, 2022, and I've only used this much of it. So, you know, that's not a huge amount of use there, but I have been using it lately. Like once a week-ish, I've been grabbing this. I actually have started keeping it in my bedroom next to my bed and keeping a little pen with it and then just journaling at the end of the day. So that's actually kind of great that she's getting some use. I'm just gonna pop it under this one because it's a little bigger, but still approximately A5 sized. Let's talk about Magnolia here. This one's a B5 sketchbook. It's not actually a like a dotted journal or a lined journal or anything like that. I'm just gonna pop this back here. And so, because this one has art paper inside, I've been using it as an art book. And I had this idea that like, I was gonna do a tutorial every week and fill this thing up, like the beautiful sketchbooks that you see on Instagram. And look, I haven't done that. I also haven't not done that, but 
I had just really overestimated how much free time I was going to have, I think. So this one is still being used. I haven't touched it in a while, not since I was preparing for my June setup in my journal, which was back in May. So it's the end of June now. So you're not getting a lot of use there, Magnolia. I wouldn't say that I'm retiring it by any means, but I don't know if I'd count it in my official lineup of journals that are on regular rotation. It's kind of just an occasional journal. So let's put that one to the side over here. I don't know that she counts. And her little sister, this is the Reverie Journal. Sorry, I didn't mention actually, this one's from Mellow Days, which is a an indie brand based out of France. And it's a lovely journal and I do recommend it. I think it's beautiful. They are quite often sold out though, so you gotta kinda keep an eye on things and make sure you know when things are coming back into stock. This journal, the Reverie Journal, is also from Mellow Days. And this is a dot grid, kind of classic bullet journal 160 pages, 160 GSM, but watercolor paper. And this was my bullet journal, my everyday journal for the first half of 2024. I think it's a lovely journal. And I think if you paint in your journal a lot and that's your thing and you love it, it's a great choice. But I did not enjoy the experience of this journal. I do not think it's bad. I just wanna make that really clear. I don't think this journal is in any way lacking. I don't think that it's bad. I just don't think it's for me. So let me be really clear there, just because I don't like it doesn't mean that it's not a good journal. The watercolor paper is a little textured. I don't know if I can pick that up on camera in this kind of light, but it doesn't look like it would be a lot of texture, but I found that it really messed with my Pigma Microns. It kind of like tore up some of my pens and I started getting into fountain pens in this journal because I was having so much trouble with my usual fine liners. So. That's always interesting. I still have some stuff to do in this one. I've got some memory keeping spreads that I want to add. I really found it a struggle though to use my bullet journal this year. And that's for a variety of reasons. I have a video about how I was in a journaling slump that I'll link to up here in the corner in case you want to see that and how I've like been working to pull myself out of it. But I honestly think that trying to paint in every journal setup was part of it for me because that just made it so much harder. It was a bit of a mental drain. I did that to myself. That was a choice that I made and that I chose to stick to but I do feel like I just wasn't enjoying my journal this year. Even though I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with all of my themes, I think everything turned out looking quite pretty. I just, I didn't, it wasn't me. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's because my thing is like floral stickers and papers and this just wasn't it. But I'm calling her as good as finish. I'm still at the end of June. There's a little bit more planning to be done in this one and some memory keeping that I wanna catch up on. That's a good thing to note though. I started memory keeping in this journal because I was journaling so much less that I was gonna have all these pages left over. And I was like, I just wanna use this journal up and get out of it. So I started memory keeping and that's been really fun. So I'm thankful to this journal for that, for contributing that to the year for me. Once again, I just feel like I really have to drive this point home. Not a bad journal, it's still held up beautifully. The spine's in great condition. I painted in it every time I set up a new month. It's still got both its ribbon bookmarks. The cover looks gorgeous. It's just not the right journal for me, but maybe it is for you. There are plenty of people who love them, so. Keep that in mind. Replacing that journal, let's get into some new journal stuff now, is this little guy from Tifosi. This is the Bodie Dot Grid A5 journal. I'm only a little ways into it. This one has 196 pages, which is way more than I'm used to. I hate this page. I wish they hadn't done this like pre-printed thing, but we can change that. Maybe in a live stream, we can replace this page together, cover it with stuff but I've done my new year, not new year, second half of the year, new journal spreads back here, future logs and goals and stuff. And I've set up the July, which is available on my channel to watch if you wanna see how that one came together. I'm really happy with it. I haven't done anything with the rest of the journal. 196 pages is kind of intimidating for me, but because of the memory keeping that I mentioned, I feel like maybe I can still use this journal up in the second half of the year. This is my first time using, oh, it's got so much cat hair on it. Oh, that needs a little bit of sticky tape, sticky rolling to clean it up. This is my first time using a Tifosi journal, so I will report back with how I feel it went. But so far, so good. I don't think it's especially luxurious or anything, but I do think it's nice, so good to know. We'll pop her over here since she's part of the new recruits. I actually have two more journals, three more journals, sort of. Two more journals and an honorable mention. Now there's cat hair over my desk that I wanna show you. This one you may have just met because my most recent video before this one was about this journal. This is my finance journal. So I used to keep a cash flow tracker 
in all of my monthly bullet journal spreads. I did the first couple of months of the year with a cash flow tracker in this one, but all my previous journals for the past several years have all had cash flow tracking things in them for both an annual cash flow kind of overall master list and every month a spending log too. So I've just taken all of that data and I moved it into this journal. I am still planning on covering the little caravan. I don't think this is ugly by any means. I did. I think I did say that I thought it was ugly in the video. It's not ugly, it's just not my vibe. Honestly, none of this is really the like vanilla bean kind of linen with the little colorful slubby bits. Just not an Erin journal, but it was a traveler's notebook that I already had in my collection. Again, this is from Archer and Olive. This is from one of their subscription boxes in the past and I kept it because I'd never had a traveler size journal before and I just wanted to like see if it, it came in handy and it did. I feel like I'm gonna be in this one for a few years because so far I've set up pages from March through to now and I've used this much of the book. So I think this one will keep me going probably through to the end of next year, like 2025. Um, and then I will have probably another one because I do have another traveler size Archer and Olive on order, the compass one. You're a new friend and we love you. Gosh, there's a lot of Archer and Olive going on here, isn't there? Which is kind of funny because I've, I've never been like an Archer and Olive gal necessarily, but this tiny pocket journal is also from Archer and Olive. It's from their vintage library set, uh, which was their subscription box from September last year, 2023. And this one has kind of a niche use. I specifically went for a pocket sized one because I wanted it to be portable because this is my Morris dancing journal. If you're not familiar with Morris dancing, it's a kind of English folk dancing. I started Morris dancing in August last year and there are a lot of traditions, a lot of different things to remember. There's a lot of like language and terminology involved in Morris dancing that is specific to different styles. Like Atterbury is a particular region of the Cotswolds. I'm doing Cotswold Morris dancing and Atterbury has its own kind of styles. Litchfield has its own kind of styles. Kellybrook, I think is actually originated from Victoria in Australia, but it's a Morris dancing style, Bloodington. And they're all different. And I was having trouble remembering the name of the dance, having trouble remembering the order of the figures, like how are you supposed to dance things. So I started keeping them in this little journal. I just take it to Morris Dancing with me and I make notes that are probably not accurate to the way that people would notate the dances, but they help me remember stuff. So this is my Morris Dancing journal. I think it's adorable. It does have lined pages, which doesn't fill me with joy. I do always, always prefer a dot grid, but we work with what we've got. Welcome to the family, little guy. You've been helping me out so much. <laughs> Then I've just got one more journal that I want to mention, and this is kind of in the same vein as the Magnolia journal over here that I'm, I'm using, but I'm not using it frequently enough to consider it part of the lineup, you know, but I wanted to mention it, and it's this one. It's another Archer and Olive. This one is from the same box as Little Morris journal here, the Vintage Library box. It's a gorgeous journal. It's fully embossed all around. And this one I've been using as like my slightly too early research and development journal Mark II. I was doing some workshops earlier this year with a wonderful stationery store in Brisbane called Stash World. And one of them was a reading journaling workshop. And you might recognize some of this stuff from a video I did about tracking books, like different ways that you can track your reading in your journal, whether that's in a dedicated reading journal or not. And I set these up and we did the dot grid spacing on this side, which people found really helpful. So I've been trying to incorporate that into my videos since, but I wanted to set these up in a way that the participants at my reading journal workshop could pass this around and have a really good look. And I didn't want them to have to leaf through this entire thing to find those pages, which is why I had set up some practice ones in here and I decided to do them again in this journal. So I could take this and be like, this is the examples. A bunch of the pages aren't used. You can just use the ones that are in here as a reference. And there we go. So. Not a lot going on in there yet, but I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep this to just reading journal research and development, or if it's just gonna take over from this one when it's completely done. But this is a research and development journal in its early stages. <laughs> As a result, I've only used it for that kind of one purpose. So I haven't done anything else with it, which is why it's being considered not part of the lineup. But these ones, these are the 
regular rotation journals for the second half of 2024. Journal lineup assemble. They're a pretty motley bunch of colors and sizes, but it's working for me and I'm happy about it. So now that you've seen my journal lineup for the second half of the year, I want to know about yours. How many journals do you have on the go at any one time? Is your lineup changing as we're coming into the second half of the year? Which is your favorite journal to use and why do you like it so much? I want to know everything. Also, if you're one of my channel members in the Jubilant Journals or the Page Majors tiers, jump into the Discord and share a photo of your lineup with me. I'd really like to see that. In case you'd like to keep watching, there is a link in the top right corner here to the finance journal video that shows you exactly how this journal works and fits into my lifestyle. And underneath that, there is a link to another video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for talking journals with me. See you soon.